Ah, uh, here you are. Oh yeah, that's uh, very odd. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Technology. Yeah. So you were talking about the when I said you can make make life what you want of it, etc. Here we're getting into like what I think is maybe one of the most difficult questions is the question of free will and do you, you know, when you look at astrology or you look at the Bazu from Chinese medicine, from Chinese Taoist techniques, do you actually have a choice in how your life comes out or are you, or are you fulfilling some sort of destiny or, you know, is it mapped out for you? And that's a really difficult question. You know, I don't think there's an easy answer to that. I know in the philosophy circles, I was reading a philosophy magazine the other week and they said, most philosophers would disagree, would say free will can't exist, but we don't say that anymore because it pisses people off. Like from a philosophical point of view, you can't, Defend free will. Mm. You can destroy all the arguments of free will. And yet, we need to have the illusion of free will for us to function. That was the whole existential argument for coming out of the French in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. And that's sort of like playing the game you play the game that you're in charge of your life and your death. But yet, it's a game. Right. Um, which is why when it came to the law of attraction and the manifestation of your desires, and if you concentrate it on it enough, it will come. For me, that was always seemed a very selfish approach to life, is that I'm going to force the world to my perception of what is right for me. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's the whole butterfly effect. Mm -hmm. Every action... Gone. Jonathan's frozen. Maybe. Yeah. Now you're back. We're back. Yeah. I think my connection is becoming unsta more unstable. <laughs> Everybody's Zooming what everybody is, on Bank Holiday Monday. You mentioned earlier the idea of karma, the, the yeah. karmic war. Hmm. Those are the types of actions that create karma. Karma is when you make an action and then there's, then there's the consequences, the results of those actions will come back. Yeah. In Hinduism, that's a karma creating. In Buddhism, that's a karma creating action. Now, the idea from a spiritual point of view is to not influence or not to create that type of, to not create karma, is to allow the world to unfold itself through yourself, is to become a vessel of the universe itself mm. in your particular field, in your particular realm. So I always had a problem taking this this idea of the karma and the idea of the secret and manifesting intention mm. yeah yeah I, I mean at the moment i'm going through a process where i do believe each person has you know each person has their own own type of operating system so you can be a linux you can be a windows you can be a mac you know, 
you know, that they have a general design and that general design allows mm -hmm. specific interactions and filtrations of the current reality as it stands perceived. Um, and, and, I, and I think of the vo voice inside my head of a teacher saying to me, you know, you, you come here and you either get the package holiday, the luxury cruise, or you know, camping in a storm, <laughs> you know, and, and literally is that preordained? Is it predestined? Is it already mapped out that way? Or is it just the way you're perceiving what you've been given? Um, and, it, and it reminded me of a book. Is it Viktor Frankl? Um, Man's Search for Meaning for Life? Yeah. And I read it a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, that's Viktor Frankl. Yeah. And, I, you know, I just couldn't comprehend, you know, how how someone can, I mean, obviously people have different skills and abilities, but how he was able to compartmentalize, uh, going back to that trauma thing. And then I remember a, a guy that I lived with, he was a businessman and he was, uh, we were living like a few, few different professionals living in a house together. And he used to say to me, it is poster on his wall and in his bedroom, it was like a beautiful life. And, and as he said, that's my favorite film. Have you ever seen it? And I was like, no, you know, I've never heard of it. And he said, okay, one, he said, one Sunday we'll sit down and we'll watch it. And it reminded me a little bit of the Victor Frankl experience. And, but I don't know if you've ever seen the film, A Beautiful Life, but I think it's Italian. I'm going to say Italian. It could be Spanish. I'm no, it's, it's, it's English. The original Americans with Jimmy Stewart. Okay, uh, so maybe it's a I'm Christmas getting... movie. Okay, no, so no, it's not this film. I think the translation is "It's a Beautiful Life," but it's... at least the the American one. There's, there, there might have been an original Italian, but it's a beautiful life. Are you talking about the um, one about the World War Two with um, the Italian actor? Yeah, I might not be a beautiful life, which is but... called Beautiful Life, but not it's. Life. Yeah, there we go. That's the one. I got it wrong. But I just remember watching this film and thinking, you know, how the, the, the father helped forge the reality for the son to get through this idea of everything being a game. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pause this recording, end it so we, we don't lose it. And I'll say what we'll do is we'll pick up on a beautiful life in part two, which we can do All right. this week because I think today it's Bank Holiday Monday. Probably all five point yeah. eight million Irish people are zooming their families today. So um, that must be it. Uh, yeah, the connection is just too unstable now. So thank you for those insights. Um, Thanks for joining me. <laughs> yeah, this. no worries. My pleasure. Cra crazy journey. Um, and yeah, we'll pick up. If anybody has any comments or wants to leave any comments for myself or Jonathan below, I'm going to post this on YouTube. I am going to then upgrade the recording quality of this and, and start keeping archiving this and putting it into the new podcast, which will be coming out next week, Cup of Chi, um, and which will be just talking all things life life nourishing, including death nourishing. Uh, we didn't really get into what I wanted to talk to, but we have, <laughs> we have another four or five hours of going into that. So yeah. thanks, Jonathan. And um, if pleasure. anyone wants to know what Jonathan's up to, you can check him out um, there. He's an acupuncturist based in Lausanne, Switzerland. And he also has his own training uh, company called UAT. So I'll leave the links below to the website. If you want to know how he's helping people transition through difficult phases, uh, such as death or uh, that everything related to the psyche, mm -hmm. um, reach out to him. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jonathan. My pleasure.